right, I want to make up the parade truck, which is block number nine on the Kimberbell Red, White, and Bloom Quilting Design Guide. And block number nine requires plaid one, four by eight. My five by seven hoop will not work. I need to get a larger hoop. I'm just gonna go to the nine by 14, which is, oh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use my nine by 14 hoop and I'll just put the multi-needle on there, but I'm gonna do this on the single needle. Tell it okay. And I'm gonna go to my quilting designs and I'm gonna pull in the four by eight plaid from the background quilting files and I need to rotate that, don't I? Let me highlight this on the objects panel and I will hit this blue arrow up here and rotate it 90 degrees. That looks good. And then I need to bring in the truck and it's right here. There we go. And I need to rotate, I'm going to highlight the truck, and I need to rotate this 90 degrees. Perfect. That's pretty simple. Uh, this is going to be pretty easy to do. I'm, I'm not going to do any kind of uh, color sorting or anything, I don't think. It looks pretty easy. It's a lot of um, applique. So we have the batting placement, batting tack down, fabric placement, fabric tack down, and we have the background quilting. For the truck, how many do we have? Oh, 25, my goodness. That's a lot of color stops. The steps for the truck are a little tricky, so I'm gonna go over this with you step by step. I'm aligning, I'm using the nine by 14 hoop uh, the background quilting on this is pretty big and it requires a 10 and a half by 6 inch background piece. So I'm going to use my 9 by 14 hoop on this. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to create the crosshairs based on the center points vertically and center points horizontally. I just kind of put them on a line I can see on the mat underneath and that makes it pretty easy to get these centered. This is just an easy way to do this. And then I need to find center on my fabric and the easy way to do that is to fold the fabric in half both directions and you want to make a tiny little tiny little clip right there on the edges and those will give you your center markings and you don't have to worry about doing any kind of a chalk line on your fabric or having to erase it or anything like that. Just makes life a lot easier. Okay, great. Now, when we go to the machine and it's time to put the fabric down, you can easily align your fabric and get it centered. These little clips will be cut off when the block is finally trimmed. The items you're going to need to put all of this together are going to be your background fabric, the, the main fabric, and it is backed with the Kimberbell's Fusible Woven interfacing. and. This is a, just a piece of batting that I am using for the background quilting. If you're not doing the background quilting, you will, you can omit this step right here and we will put it all together with a regular quilt sandwich when all the blocks are done. And then you are going to need the red vinyl from the embellishment kit. You're going to need your little tires. These were cut out on the scan and cut and they are backed with heat and bond light. You're going to need this piece of clear vinyl right here. This is actually a chunk I had left over 
from the Life is Sweet block, the lemonade block. And then in your embellishment kit, there's a little flimsy piece of white plastic. And this is going to go over the window. All right. Or actually, this will go under the stitching, and then the vinyl will go on top of it like that. So that's what it'll look like. But this is what you're going to need to make the design uh, at the embroidery machine right now. I have all of the threads I need back here on the thread tree. They're not in any particular order, but I like to use this thread tree stand. I'll link to it below. And then I bring all of the threads up and the description in the thread tree says that this little spring is for cutting threads. Well, I just kind of slip the ends in there and that keeps everything up nice and tidy out of the way. All right, on the luminaire, I'm gonna go to embroidery and the pocket for memory and wireless. I sent the design wirelessly and I'm looking for parade truck. Here it is right here. Tell it's set. And we are ready to go. I'm gonna to touch embroidery. And that's all we have to do to it. Change my thread color here. I'm using a light icy blue. This is actually a Floriani thread. But I'm using combo of Floriani, Isocord, Madeira, Poly Neon. Okay. This first stitch is the placement line for the batting. the batting covers all of the, the stitch line by like half an inch. Now I'm going to remove the hoop and trim around the batting. back in the machine and it's going to stitch the placement line for the fabric. And put your fabric down. If there's any particular way you want the fabric, uh, be sure to set it that way. Remembering your tires are going to go over here and your roof is up here. So just align the divot, the little clip marks that we made with the lines on the stabilizer and now you know that it is straight. Very nice, okay. And here is the tack down line for the fabric. Now it's gonna stitch the background quilting The background quilting has finished, and if you are not doing the background quilting, now is when you want to put your main fabric down, and you will want to align your little marks with the crosshairs that you drew on your stabilizer, and take some tape, and just tape it down on either end. We're at step number one, stitch the rocket body fill. So I have changed my thread color to do that. Now it says number two, stitch the rocket body stripes fill. And I'm gonna do a thread change. Now I need to do a thread color change to a red. We are on stitch number three, stitch the rocket tip fill. Okay, the next is stitch the pinwheel stick detail. We're on step number four, and so I need to do a thread color change to white.
That was a big jump thread. I'm going to trim that off in a little bit. When you have jump threads that occur in the middle of a design like this, if possible, go ahead and trim them out because you don't want them to get caught underneath something else. All right, we are on stitch number five, which is stitch the inner pinwheel fill. So I need to do a thread change back to red. Now I'm gonna do a thread change back to the light blue. We are on number six, stitch the outer pinwheel fill. Color change back to white for the flag pole detail. And no color change is required to stitch the flag white fill. Color change back to red, stitch the red, the flag red stripe detail. You know, you can't see that pole at all. Huh. You can't see that pole at all, so I'm gonna do a needle plus and minus on my screen. I wanna go back to the pole. Right there, and I'm gonna change it to like a gray. The gray that I'm using on the um, bumper, you just can't see it in the white on that fabric, and I just think it'll look better. That looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Now I'm gonna jump ahead in the needle plus minus uh, threads to the blue part. Oh, that looks great. Okay. It says stitch the tires placement line and it tells you you can use a neutral fabric. I'm gonna use the fabric that I'm gonna to use to tack them down. So normally whenever I see something that says neutral, neutral, this means it does not matter what color the thread is because it's going to be covered up or whatever. So usually when I see these, I go to the very next color that they're gonna want and then that way I'll use that fabric and I, it's just less, uh, thread changes that I have to do. So I'm going to put the black, the tire satin outline thread in for stitch number 11. My tires have heat and bond light on the back of them and it doesn't matter which one goes where, they are identical. I had a suggestion from a viewer that to prevent sewing a ironing pad to the back of your project, you could take your little ribbons and put them on here and I think that's a wonderful idea. Is, oh, let's see. I didn't get it just right. I guess they're round. I don't know. They should be. Hmm. Well, that worked. <laughs> Either that or I'm thinking about it. 
Okay, now we are on stitch number 12, the tack down for the tires. And now the satin fill for the tires. I need a thread color change for my hubcaps and my bumper. The next one is a basting stitch for the truck bed pocket placement line. I'm going to put it in red. You're going to want to take some of your Kimberbell paper tape and tear off two little pieces and put them on the end of a two by four piece of the leather. And you want to put this, it says place truck bed pocket with the edge centered along the placement line. Okay, so I'm going to kind of fold it in half, not really make a crease, I'm just going to Put it right here on the la on the line, and put this here. So I think that's straight. Now, so I don't get confused, I'm going to take a little clip. It's really easy to get confused, and I'm just going to put my clip right here. That way I know not to cut that. And you need to trim the outside of the bed now. That's not too smooth, but that's okay because I think there's a wheel well going right there. There, now I know I didn't make a boo-boo. Now what? Stitch the truck cab placement line. We're on number 18. Place the truck cab leather right side up. Cover that. Stitch this down. Now we need to trim away around the outside of this. I made it a point to make sure the top of this cab was rounded and I didn't cut a sharp 90 degree angle right there. I think that's part of the cuteness of the cab is that it is rounded. Now we need to stitch the placement lines for the wheel wells. and then stitch them down. So we are on step number 21. I've got a big, long, hairy jump thread right here. I don't know why it didn't cut, but I cut it. take my time to trim out these wheel wells and make sure I get nice smooth trims all the way around. I don't want any jagged edges. I don't know about coloring that in. I am not a fan of all that white from the underside of the vinyl pleather. I guess it looks okay. I'm not liking it. It does look better if it has been colored in on at least the red on red. That looks a lot better if, if, if it's colored in a little bit. I think it's because you're trimming on a curve, whereas on these other parts you're trimming and it's straight, and it just looks better. Yeah, I don't know. But that does look better since I colored it in a little bit. That was just too much for me. 
Okay, now what? We are on stitch the window placement line and it wants you to do that in white. Now you're gonna take your little white plastic and lay it over the top. Take a little piece of tape tape it down. Just tear away the vinyl, the little plastic. It just tears right off. Oh, that's so cute. That looks great. Okay, now you need to put the vinyl over the window. Okay, make sure there's nothing under it. You don't want any kind of thread or anything under the vinyl. This right here, and let it tack it down. This is, I'm gonna give myself enough to grab a hold of it, pull it up so I can trim it. This is step number 24. Getting kind of thick. All right, remove the vinyl. sharp corner here. I want to get rid of that. Okay. Oh, that looks great. Looking good. All right. Now, stitch the door handle fill. That's it. The door handle. I'm going to switch back to a black for the door handle. it was gonna be hard but it was really pretty easy it looks adorable okay to trim this up they want you to nest the orange pop rulers you're gonna trim it up to squ it says square finished block to eight and a half by four and a half so they want you to put this is the four and a half by six and a half and this is the six and a half by eight and a half so What's really nice about having these little notches on your fabric is there are little notches. I don't know if you can see them, but there are little notches on these rulers and you can straighten up the notch top and bottom and side to side. It says you don't want to cut the sides right in the picture. This ruler is covering that little that wheel well and that's okay so I am matching the arrows on the ruler with the little notches in my fabric this is right and so I'm going to trim this one make sure these are straight with my notches top and bottom too so I don't cut it wonky Top and bottom. Make sure I'm right here. Yep, cut top and bottom. Okay. Then it says remove this one, and then it wants you to cut these sides, right? Remove the four and a half by six and a half, cut the left and right of the block as shown in blue. 
do not cut the top and bottom edges. All right, so they want you to, I see what you're doing. Okay, now remove your ruler. Yep, and trim these up. I'm just going to use a little ruler like this. I'm going to straighten these out. It seems a little unorthodox, but I guess it works, right? Make sure my ruler's straight with my first cut. Okay. And you should be trimmed up. Whoop, I got a couple of threads right here. Gotta go. To four and a half by eight and a half. Let's see. Four and a half by eight and a half. Sweet, it worked. That turned out great. I love it. <laughs> oh, how fun was that? 